Hello everyone, welcome back to Flight Sim, where I'm going to test out the Indiafox Seco slash Heat Blur F14 from Miramar to China Lake, and we'll put it through its spaces. I'm going to fly the F14A, there is a B variant that comes with the package as well, and I'm fueling it to, well, oh no, I wanted three quarters full basically, and that's because we're going to try and go high and fast for a bit, and we'll probably use up a chunk of fuel with that. Uh, there is supposed to be the possibility of weapon placements, uh, there are presets, but only with the non-Microsoft version, not the Marketplace version. I got this off of their website, so maybe I'll see if maybe we can load it out with uh, the Jester menu. So we do have a co-pilot Jester, a Rio, not a co-pilot, and we will see how that functions as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are, and let's check out the weapons first and it says so to get the gesture menu you click on this display here and select aircraft loadout oh, so that's a little bit difficult to read there we go and so we'll go with this loadout roger by far my favorite and so there's plenty of gesture options uh, can help you with the startup the navigation alignment and destination options so if you want to sort out your waypoints we have only one waypoint, but if you had a lot of waypoints, that would be a way to switch between them. Uh, attack and channels, and tactical information, I don't know what that does, but radar antenna, VHF and frequencies, and aircraft servicing. So toggle external power, repair damages, wheel chocks, etc. Not the same as the DCS world version, of course, uh, because the functionality is much reduced, but the price is also much reduced, thankfully. Uh, the base version, the base cost is $35, but if you have the DCS World Heapler F14, you can get a $10 discount. Uh, you have to email them an uh, image of your order, uh, they really just need the order number, and then they'll give you a $10 coupon so you can get it for $25, so I got it for $25 which uh, seems to be a good deal. Uh, lots of detail inside the cockpit here. And of course, we've got the gesture functionality with our Rio. And something to note is that uh, if you want to be able to toggle the nose wheel steering, you should map that in the control options. So type in nose. And to toggle it is joystick button 12. I don't know why it's set nose wheel steering to limit. I have flown the plane already. And I did actually hit the limit on the nose wheel steering and it got stuck there. So I don't know. Uh, but anyway, let's see if our weapons are there. Indeed, we have sidewinders, sparrows, four phoenixes, and the external tanks. So everything is looking good, the plane is looking very good. And the download size is 4 gigabytes. it's unzipped uh, 8 gigabytes. That's an interesting, interesting polygon right there. <laughs> anyway, I suppose it must be the way that, that it is, but it's very flat. Anyway, so there we have the F-14 exterior, and let's go on with flying it. So, if you have nose wheel steering enabled, and the HUD really is a very, 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 very simple rudimentary HUD. Um, it says NWS engaged under the brake steer, that yellow light. So that says that the nose wheel steering is there. Uh, boy, is it frisky though, so yeah. After all, it's meant for uh, maneuvering on a carrier, so. Now this has the stock style afterburner, which means that if you push your throttle forward, you won't get the afterburner unless you push it toggle. Uh, Speed 100 now. Got to turn. Well, okay. I see. I okay. I've turned off the nose wheel steering now, so that we're just on rudder. That way, it's not as frisky. Okay. Uh, well, as long as Jester doesn't say anything sarcastic, I would suppose that I've done a good job, right? Positive rate, gear up. That's how that works. Speed 
flaps up 220. Okay, so if we want to be able to see our waypoint on the display, we should go to steering destination. So now on this bottom center display, we can see the arrow to our destination and the range as well. A little bit choppy. This is a reasonably scenery intense area, San Diego. And there are other people flying around here, possibly with the F-14, because Miramar would make sense for that. So there might be some Fuel 15, busyness around here. Uh, yeah, just to give us fuel call-outs, so that's helpful. Let's see from outside. The wing has swept. And we have not engaged afterburner yet. We should probably climb a bit first and then engage afterburner because it guzzles a lot of fuel, of course. Currently over 400 knots, Mach 0.7 as I'm climbing here. It's going down because I'm climbing vigorously. Not as vigorously as we could, but... It doesn't feel quite as organic as the DCS World F-14. Uh, that one really feels like its own peculiar beast. Uh, but, you know, that's more about the uh, sim limitations than anything else. I'm sure they would have if they could have. The sound of the plane. Well, I don't think anybody's going to have any complaints about the visual model, one would hope. The fuel consumption rate seems correct, as far as I can tell. Very reasonable. And the afterburner guzzles it like crazy, as expected. Okay, I'm impatient. Let's go faster, Burner. Very dramatic. That's the afterburner. Well, let's try and break Mach 1. An important moment in the life of any F-14, of course. And we see the transonic drag dip. I have, I'm not moving the plane at all. It's just fuel 13,000. We'll need to retrim after breaking the sound barrier. And after breaking the sound barrier, our afterburner is taking ever more fuel as we accelerate because there's more air going into the engine, more fuel is getting burned with it, and we accelerate pretty, pretty well. So I'm at 1.4 and climbing beyond 36,000 feet. Fuel 12,000. Here we have the silence up front, relative silence. And then the sound barrier, well, the shock cone. sonic boom there. It's a custom one. Now I've tried it and uh, unlike the air brakes on other fighter jets in the game, uh, the air brake on this doesn't like to come out at really really high speeds. <laughs> so uh, it is realistic like that. It'll sort of make the semblance of being deployed without actually fully deploying. Oh, well, somewhere over there is L.A. And it's 
getting a little bumpy as we approach Mach 2. We're at Mach 1.86-ish. Oh, we are going down a bit. We're past Mach 2, but it's on a dive. No, no, I want to pass Mach 2 legitimately, thank you. Well, we're going up pretty quickly, and we're still past Mach 2, about Mach 2.1. Fuel 9000. Very quiet up here. We're about 55,000 feet and holding at Mach 2.1 something. But our destination is only 50 nautical miles away. So, all right, I think we need to descend. We have certainly... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay, well, it looks like I... I might have caused the engine a bit of a problem. Dead stick landing at China Lake, I guess? Master caution! Okay, so... Stall? We're definitely not... Well, maybe the engine is stalled. Wing sweep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, great. Yeah, okay, so it seems like uh, throttling down too severely or too quickly might not be the best thing. And the wings are staying swept, so this might be a good time to, like, manually... Can we? I'm not feeling the manualness of this. Okay, well, I don't think I have control at all. Well, I have the rudder. <laughs> but... I don't have the big... Horizontal stabilizers. Okay, uh, Jester, could you, like, restart the engines? <laughs> Apparently not. Well, there's China Lake. <laughs> oh, we got something back. Um, I don't know what or how, but... Okay. Well, what can I do? At least, I can turn. Something's happening. Oh! Okay, where is the... How do I turn off the master caution? I don't think I'm getting power from the engine, actually. Well, I've got gear deployment. I don't know what I'm lining up with, but... Well, the wings are still super swept back. 2,000 feet. And I don't know if I can sweep them forward or... Watch the sink rate! We're at uh, steer point one. Oh, well, my stall speed is much higher than, you know, with the wings in the normal position. Ah. Okay, well, so that can happen. But another thing that can happen is that we can take off from the USS Forestal, in theory. Gotta try this out. Now, the manual says that Flightson does not support natively a catapult launch system. 
If launch bar is deployed when the aircraft is on the ground and the throttle is advanced to 80% RPM or more, wheel brakes are engaged the, and wheel brakes are engaged, the aircraft will simulate a catapult launch. Okay, so we are on the, on the catapult and we will need to kneel. The kneeling doesn't actually happen inside, but we get our little bar down. And technically it's not on the catapult thing, but it should work. And so launch bar is there, and then we follow up. And all we have to do is release the brakes. And it works! Okay. Climb. You're up. I guess I have to... No, the nose strut thing automatically goes to off afterwards. Okay. 220 flaps up. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt a landing, but there's SDK compliant carriers and non-SDK compliant carriers, and I assume this is the compliant kind? Anyway, we'll see. I probably will not make it anyway. It's been a long time since I practiced carrier landings. Oop. Well, I guess we should just go for landing on the HUD. 300 wings auto. Well, we're going way too fast. Well, the air brakes do work at these speeds. So, oh, I say air brakes, the air brake is only one. And the carrier is there. Wow, we're high. <laughs> okay, let's not be this high. So for the SDK compliant carriers, um, the arrestor wire dynamics will be handled by the SIM as they were with the Top Gun package. For non-SDK compliant carriers, basically if you have the tail hook out, you're okay. So we're fully configured for landing, well, the tail hook. Let's get the tail hook down. Yeah, this is going to be great, I'm sure. Oh, went too far. Oh. I'm too low. Uh, I'm off. I'm really off. Oh, no! No! Oh! Well, anyway, <laughs> that'll, that'll take a lot more practice. Is it worth practicing in here or should I be practicing carrier landings in BCS world? That's a good question though. So I swear on my first try with it, I landed it safely, but it, it has ended up with two crashes. So it's not the easiest plane in the world to fly. There, there are quirks with it and apparently failures. So watch out. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.